Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a major confirmation and an observation of the existence of the so-called cosmic web, the very long channels of gas that connect all of the galaxies in the universe. This is not the first such confirmation, but this one is really major because it actually uses several different telescopes on several different observations to see a really long string that's roughly around 50 million light years in length. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and let's find out what all of this means as well. First of all, it's sort of really important to remember that space itself, even though we think of it as empty, is actually not really empty at all. It's just really, really big and because of this large size, it just contains very low densities of various material across the universe. Now, for example, right here, at a distance of a few hundred thousand light years away from the center of Milky Way, it does look like it's somewhat empty. But the thing is, there's actually these very, very difficult to see connections that connect the galaxies, including some of the more distant galaxies, that does act as a kind of a structure and also a sort of a channel that provides a lot of the gas material to various galaxies as they grow. And so because of this, this is actually a relatively simplistic view of what all of this looks like. Here is a much more realistic view with each of the white dots and specifically each of the red dots representing relatively large and massive galaxies. The red dots here represent quasars. And so essentially all of these galaxies are formed in such a way that they sort of concentrate at the connections of the cosmic web. In some way you could really think of it as a kind of a spider web actually. But originally we've discovered all of this by running a lot of really complex simulations like this one right here by the Illustris project, which essentially took into consideration the existence of dark matter, dark energy, and sort of combined all of this, combined all of the math and all of our knowledge, ran the simulations, and that resulted in the formation of these very strange and also very well pronounced cosmic webs, which basically had a lot of dark matter present in them, but also a lot of various gas distributed along with the dark matter itself. Whereas the stars themselves, the visible matter, only represented a relatively small component. And in the beginning, when we only tried to measure the total mass of the universe using the visible matter, using the stars and galaxies, the scientists pretty early on realized that a lot of the visible matter was actually missing, not including the dark matter. A lot of the so-called baryonic matter was not present in galaxies either. At least half of it was somewhere else. And over the years, a lot of scientists have been arguing that, well, most of this invisible baryonic matter is probably just hidden in these various cosmic webs that connect galaxies together. Now, if you were to think about the total mass here, it's literally half of the visible matter. But in terms of the actual density, it's much smaller than any vacuum would produce on the planet. As a matter of fact, if you were to measure the density of the cosmic web, basically if you were to stand in the middle of a cosmic web string and try to measure the density here, you would find around 10 particles per cubic meter. That's much less than any vacuum we can produce in a lab and is roughly around 100,000 times less in terms of density than what we would find in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy in between stars, for example. So in other words, these are extremely low density regions. But because there's so much space in between these galaxies and because all of the space is essentially the connections, the cosmic web, overall, all of this adds up to being about half of the visible mass in the universe. And the scientists had to somehow prove this because it's very, very difficult to see this. And also, by the way, being able to prove this automatically gives dark matter Another bonus point, because without dark matter, it's very, very difficult to explain the existence of the cosmic web. But to try to see all of this, we can just use an optical telescope like Hubble telescope, mostly because it would be almost impossible for us to detect anything. This gas is practically invisible and there's just not enough of it for most telescopes to be able to see anything. So we have to use frequencies of light that are not visible to human eye. In this case, the scientists behind the paper, that as always you can find in the description below, decided to use two major telescopes, the X-ray Erosita mission by Germany and Russia, and also the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder, also known as ASCAP, that recently produced this incredible radio map of the night sky that allows you to see millions of different galaxies. When it comes to detailed observation, and when it comes to X-rays and radio emissions, these two telescopes currently have no equals. They're extremely precise and extremely accurate. 
And so using these two telescopes, we could hypothetically see light coming from different sources in the cosmic web that we couldn't really see otherwise. And to try to detect the cosmic web, the scientists here focused on the galactic region known as Abel 339195, the region of several massive galaxies that you see on the screen. All of this had to be obviously observed both in the X-rays and in the radio waves, and also to make sure that they were on the right track, the scientists also created a few simulations of the cosmic web in this region in order to see if the simulations and the actual observations would be somewhat similar. Now, in itself, this observation was extremely detailed. It focused on observing pretty much every single part of the X-ray and radio map, and the scientists here tried to identify any possible signs of these really large cosmic formations. And not surprisingly, they were able to identify a few very, very interesting parts that did suggest that these galaxies have very large connections between them. And so, like, for example, right here, you can see that the actual observations using the Erosita X-ray observatory did suggest that there are these really large gas-like connections that stretch across a very large region away from the central galaxy, while also showing us these large parts which are essentially galactic voids, the large, I guess in some sense, hole-like formations that don't really possess anything on the inside except for the occasional clump of galaxies or possibly some gas. These galactic voids represent these very mysterious large structures that only grow larger and larger in size as the universe expands. But today we understand that the cosmic web also serves as a kind of a channel to kind of guide and propel the galaxies toward a central region, and that's where a lot of the galactic formation takes place. And so they serve as a guide for lots and lots of gas to slowly travel across the universe and to eventually combine and form these larger structures which sometimes result in galaxies. At least that's the theory so far. We're still not entirely sure how all of this takes place, but the computer simulations show us that it might actually happen that way. But how can we possibly prove this? Well, it turns out that in this particular paper, when the scientists looked at all of this in X-ray versus radio light, they realized that Erosita telescope was detecting a lot more X-ray emissions than the Australian radio telescope. So the gas was emitting a lot of X-ray emissions, but it wasn't really producing a lot of radio emissions. And this really only means one thing. It means that the hot gas here is not really interacting with other things. It's not interacting with electrons, it's not really colliding with a lot of things, there's not a lot of turbulence, and because of this it's not producing a lot of radio waves. Because it's not producing radio waves, it just means that it's flowing really smoothly across the cosmic web, and this smooth motion suggests that it's flowing in a single direction, basically kind of like a river where the water flows in a single direction, but in this case the water is not really turbulent at all. And eventually all of this smooth flowing gas falls into the galactic clusters where it helps other galaxies gain more mass and most likely also results in a massive star formation with time with the major radio emissions being only visible from the locations where the central black hole is essentially producing radio emissions as it absorbs some of this gas that falls into the galaxy. And in a nutshell, what all of this kind of suggests so far is that, well, first of all, our dark energy slash dark matter models seem to be more or less correct. We might need to change some things, but for the most part, the universe we believe is created via dark matter and dark energy seems to be really there. These simulated versus real images are close enough to reality to suggest that this is indeed what is probably happening in the universe and how a lot of things interact to begin with. Once again, bonus points for dark matter and dark energy, minus points for any other alternative theory, mostly because no other theory so far can actually explain these observations. And the other major point to make here is that this particular cosmic web part is around 50 million light years in length, which also to some extent correlates with some of the predictions of other theories that do involve dark matter in trying to form these cosmic webs across the universe. So this whole part right here is roughly around 50 million light years in length. And this has actually shown us several galactic clusters connecting together using this cosmic web. Just to give you a more realistic perspective here, the bright stars you see in the middle, that's Milky Way galaxy with its nearby neighbors. Whereas the stars you see on the left, that's the Andromeda galaxy. The distance between them is about two and a half million light years. So here we're talking about something that's at least 20 times as far away. Basically, something that's around this big. 
So the Milky Way is right there, the Andromeda Galaxy is right next to it. And so that's essentially how large this cosmic web is when we look at it from planet Earth. Which of course confirms several major theories including the invisible baryon matter or the invisible matter that we weren't really sure what it was hiding before. And this picture alone tells us that a lot of it is basically right there. It's just very very low density and very difficult to see with any other telescope. But I guess the unusual discovery here is that a lot of this seems to be a lot more clumpy and a lot less smooth than we sort of expected it to be. So once again, this simulation here has very very smooth edges. This is a lot more clumpy and has a lot more clumpy structures. And that's something that we'll probably have to explain in some of the future papers. For now though, it's still a pretty great discovery, an excellent confirmation of our current theories and an excellent confirmation of the existence of the cosmic web. But for now that's all I wanted to mention, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you see me wearing right now. Also you can check out all of these simulations and all of these incredible models by going to the websites I posted in the description such as the Illustris project that has all of this amazing galactic simulation right at your fingertips. And you can also find the visual simulations that I used in this video. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.